We have again a very important topic tonight. And I think this topic will decide about fulfilling the work of God. Mm -hmm. Under what circumstances God works great and mighty things in and through my life. Mm -hmm. It's about a crucial question. Do I work with my human skills, abilities for God? Or can God work through me with his divine abilities? Mm -hmm. And we will illustrate that in a fascinating experience. When we work for God in our own power, it leads to human results. Mm -hmm. If we surrender to the Lord completely, He can work through us. This leads to divine results. Mm -hmm. One of the most outstanding biblical examples is Moses. He wanted to free his people in his excellent human abilities. In Acts 7, <coughs> 22, 25, New Inter International Version, we are told, Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians mm -hmm. and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his own people, the Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his people, his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. What did is written here? Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. Moses had to flee and live as a shepherd in Midian for 40 years. At some point, he comes to full surrender. God charged him with the liberation of the people. He is therefore obediently on his way to Egypt. Suddenly, he is stopped by an angel. There is a sin with him a sin of omission. This one sin must first be put in order. Then, only then, the angels can protect him and God can work with his divine abilities through him. Moses led the people out of captivity. Every where he performed incredible signs and wonders in Egypt before Pharaoh, in the passage through the Red Sea, and during the 40 years in the desert. God even spoke with him personally and handed him the Ten Commandments. He became one of the greatest leaders on earth because God could work through him. Mm -hmm. Moses was with 40, trained in all university wisdom of the Egyptians. He was powerful and mighty in speech, and he thought in his power he will rescue his people. Mm -hmm. But he made a mess. Mm -hmm. But when he was surrendered to God, 
God could work through him miracles which are unbelievable. Our main text tonight is Ephesians 2 verse 10. I read according to the New King James Version. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This text talks about two works. First of all, it is about God's first work. This is my new life in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, come to me. Whoever has come to Jesus and accepted him as Lord and Savior, Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. He wants to have a constant living connection with us. And how does this place? The best explanation I found in Desire of Ages, abiding in Christ means a constant receiving of his spirit, mm -hmm. a life of unreserved surrender to his service. Mm -hmm. Our constant living relationship with Jesus results from a daily renewal or of our surrender to Jesus Christ and a daily petition and receiving of the Holy Spirit. In this way, God works for me, my new life, which I have received on the basis of God's grace and my faith. It remains a life in me. Now, the second work, God's work through me. In this setting, God creates a second work, a work through me. It says that God prepared these good works beforehand. God is the best planner. He has a general plan and a special plan for me. He has prepared a task for me. It is now up to me to carry out what God has planned. By performing this task, our faith and our talents grow. We have more joy and more strength, and we are working for God and God through us. Since God knows each of us through and through, he knows how our life can best be used to his glory. God has a life plan for us in which he can reveal his love to us and through us to others. John 7, 38 says, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, God's first work, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. The second work, through us. Jesus' marvelous promise that rivers of living water will flow from us is unsurpassable. Can we expect more? The prerequisite is our intimate living relationship with Christ. To better differentiate, I would like to call the second work, the work through us, the Nehemiah work. Because the book of Nehemiah is our biblical example for this second work. And we just start this quarter to study about Nehemiah. Was rebuilding Jerusalem's wall Nehemiah's idea? What prompted Nehemiah, who wasn't a construction expert and who had an excellent position in Persia, to rebuild Jerusalem's wall? Nehemiah said, Nehemiah 2.12, 
what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The work in Jerusalem was Nehemiah's, not Nehemiah's idea, mm -hmm. but rather God had given it to him. God had planned beforehand. Mm -hmm. God begins with small things with us. God wants us, God's word wants us not to despise the day of small things. Mm -hmm. Zechariah 4.10 says God expects us to be willing to even incompetuous tasks. It could be that the beginning is so incompetuous that we don't even notice it at the time. Only when we later look back do we spot it. God can prepare us in a very seldom way. He prepared Joseph as a slave for his high position. He prepared Moses as a shepherd. God begins with small things with us. The prerequisite for God's leading in the Nehemiah work is an intimate living relationship with God in our life. No new life. Second Chronicles 16.9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Mm -hmm. Our complete surrender and living with the Holy Spirit gives the Lord the possibility to do both of these works. Only after my new life is making consistent progress, when a continual living, living relationship with God is present. Does God entrust me with the work that he prepared before me? <laughs> Only on the foundation of a living first work does the second work come from God. When the new life is not present yet, or does not exist anymore, then the second work is a work done in completely human power with all corresponding problems. El White says, but only when they have received the Holy Spirit they can powerfully proclaim his message. Only then will they experience what God can do through them. I repeat, it is important. But only when they have received the Holy Spirit, they can powerfully proclaim his message. Only then will they experience what God can do through them. Amen. That means one condition is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then another word of Ellen White, he who surrenders himself completely to God will also be led by the divine hand. If he appreciates the teachings of divine wisdom, then he will be entrusted with a sacred mission. Mm -hmm. He who surrenders himself completely <coughs> will be entrusted with a sacred mission. That means another condition is my full surrender to Jesus Christ. Now, a first example about God's intervention in the second world. With reference to our literature, L. Wright wrote, for example, a piece 
written in the Spirit of God, angels approbate and impress the same upon the readers. But a piece written when the writer is not living wholly for the glory of God, not wholly devoted to Him, angels feel the lack in sadness. They turn away and do not impress the reader with it, because God and His Spirit are not in it. The words are good, but it lacks the warm influence of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Did you notice what matters in our literature? It must be written in the Spirit of God. The writer must live wholly for the glory of God and be completely devoted to Him. If these conditions are not fulfilled, then no divine influence is exerted. Mm -hmm. God's participation in the Nehemiah work depends on it that I live in a constant living relationship with Him, that I am connected to Him with loyalty, with faithfulness, and I think this applies <coughs> to every kind of Nehemiah work as well. It does not apply only to spiritual work. If you run a company, if you have a mission uh, institution, if you train your children, everything what we do, we should do under Jesus and for him. Second example, Desire of Ages, page 671. The preaching of the word will be of no avail when the continual presence and aid of the Holy Spirit. One might be able to present the letter of the word of God. He might be familiar with all its commands and promises, mm. but unless the Holy Spirit sets home the truth, no souls will fall on the rock and be broken. No amount of education, no advantages, however great, can make one a channel of light without the cooperation of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. God and the angels only cooperate when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and live in complete surrender to Christ. We can have a wonderful business plan or write a wonderful book that does not impress God. God's criterion is a living personal relationship not the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Without him, all our efforts will only lead to human results with the corresponding human limitations, no matter who you are or what you do. You can bring out it in millions. You can make it about internet. It brings human results when God is not in it. Mm -hmm. But is God in it, he can work on the hearts. Mm -hmm. Now, I am working for God, or does God work through me? Mm -hmm. Leroy Ephraim says, working for God is one thing, but God works through us is another thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leaving the world and following Christ is one thing, but being a man in whom the Holy Spirit dwells in his fullness, with his abandoned power and grace, 
is another. God cannot do anything revolutionary with man before he has done something revolutionary for them. May I say it again? The criterion is my life in daily, unconditional devotion to Christ and daily prayer and reception of the Holy Spirit. Why is surrender to Christ compared with marriage? Unfortunately, and that was also with me, some have fear or a reservation to give themselves totally over to God. They think they become slaves. This view is completely wrong. The Bible compares our relationship with Christ with a marriage. Christ is the unsurpassable partner. L. Wright says, in both the Old and New Testament, the marriage relation is employed to represent the tender and sacred union that exists between Christ and his people. You can divorce a marriage if you want. I never wanted that in my 55 years marriage. If we want, we can part from Christ. We remain free people, mm -hmm. but we do not want to get rid of him <clears throat> because the relationship with Christ is the best relationship Amen. we can have. Mm -hmm. We are connected with him in love and trust. El White gives us a divine advice. Make sure that you do not work over the powers given to you by God with the intention of moving God's work forward as quickly as possible. Human power cannot accelerate God's work. Our efforts must be done in oneness with the celestial intelligence. Man cannot do God's part of the work. A Paul likes to plant, to water an Apollo, but God gives the success. Mm -hmm. We should work with the heavens in simplicity and humility, always doing our best, always remembering that God is the great master. Mm -hmm. We need a constant prayer connection. When we walk in God's service, then we need a constant prayer connection with him. We need a connection with the one who prepared the work for us. Mm -hmm. He can best guide us in this work. It is like driving a car with a navigation device. God has given us great promise concerning this connection. Jeremiah 33, 3. I use it daily in my prayer. Mm -hmm. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Amen. Not only does the Lord promise to answer, but he also has promised to show us great and mighty things. Amen. Even today, God wants to do great and mighty things. When living a life in God's service, great and mighty things will happen time after time. Amen. It happens like this. <coughs> what God has planned in me and through me will repeatedly go beyond my opportunities and my cap capabilities. And it is good that way. It nurtures my dependence on God and my <coughs> collaboration with Him. Here are some quotes from our literature. Just briefly. We will win the victory 
not through great effort or power, but through complete surrender to Jesus. Ask Jesus for mercy and his efficiency, and you will not be alone in your task. Everyone who gives himself unconditionally to the Lord's service will be given the power to achieve immeasurable results. Mm -hmm. Serving our Lord is the source of great joy. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. How did Nehemiah and with him the whole community come to this joy? They came to it through their service for God. The walls of Jerusalem had been built, rebuilt in 52 days by working for God. We find the greatest fulfillment and joy. The book Nehemiah is a textbook for us about the work that God has prepared for us beforehand. Mm -hmm. God helps also to overcome discouragements. There were also situations of great discouragement in Nehemiah's work, but Nehemiah also put his trust in God in this situation. The memory of what the Lord has already done for us can support us in every danger. In addition, is God for us who can be against us? What were the effects of the earthly life of Jesus? Philip Brook says, I'm not mistaken when I say that all the armies that ever had marched all the naval forces that ever have been built, all the parliaments that ever met, and all the kings who ever ruled, have not moved the life of man on earth as sustainable as Jesus' life did. How could Jesus, as a man, have such an enormous influence? Jesus tells us, John 14, 10, Do you be not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Jesus could exert such an enormous influence as a man because he was in the Father and the Father in him. Mm -hmm. The divine influence of the Father worked through him. How could the Apostle Paul accomplish such an enormous missionary work? Mm -hmm. He says us, Galatians 2, 19, 20, I am crucified with Christ. That means he has surrendered his life to Christ. I live, but not me, but Christ lives in me. For this reason the Apostle Paul says about the tremendous work which was done through him in Romans 15, 18 and 19, through me through my words and actions, Christ himself has caused people of all nations to submit to obedience to God. He himself proved his power here in wandering wonders and through the working of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That means the divine influence of Christ worked through Paul. Jesus wants to do great works through us. In John 14, 12, he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, 
He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father. What happened when Jesus went to the Father? He was enthroned again. He received all power in heaven on earth. And as sign of his intronization, he sent as his coronation gift the Holy Spirit to us. And that he means he goes to the Father, then he can work through us. When are we in him and he in us? It's about a constant reception of the Holy Spirit and a life of unreserved devotion to his ministry. John Wesley said, God can do more with one, one man who has committed himself 100% to him than with the whole army of men who have committed to him only 99%. Wow. John Wesley discovered clearly if we are totally surrendered to Christ then God can do great things. Now I want a little bit to illustrate it. God has also prepared a work for me. To God's glory, I would like to share what a great and exciting task God gave me in 2011, 2012, without me even noticing it. He prepared a work for me, which fulfills my life more and more in this process, I experience great challenges and the greatest joy. The Lord imperceptibly set a work for me in motion of distributing revival literature. It has to do with the 40 days books by Dennis Smith and the both booklets, Steps to Personal Revival and Abide in Jesus. I see it this way. The Lord gave me a job as coordinator. He provided many other people for this work, a second work of intercession, translation, correction, prayer, financing, sharing, establishing connections, distribution, support, sharing testimonies. It is wonderful that God gives his commissions to a group. Collaboration brings more than working next to each other. God wants to connect us with each other. Some for only a short time, others long term. All together, it is valuable for all those involved to know that through God's grace, they are co-workers in God's work as a whole. Mm -hmm. My part in this work started the following way. On May 28, 2011, I was in Romania in our Romanian Health Center. An American sister who was also there every year, she knocked at my door had eight books under her arm and said, Brother Haubeil, you must read that by all means. Mm -hmm. And handed me the books. Six of these books were about the Holy Spirit by Dennis Smith. That was the first push. Three months later, <coughs> August 14th, I was uh, I arrived in Switzerland for a hiking holiday and was just going with my baggage for my car to the house. There stood an old brother. He said a very strange word to me and I asked myself, what did he mean? And suddenly 
I thought he means we lose part of our young people because of a lack of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. I never had this thought. Third, on October 28, 2011, a brother who was a stranger to me greeted me, but I bring where I live and thanked me for a worship I had held on the Holy Spirit 35 years ago before a, at a meeting of the elders and pastors in southern Bavaria. He could still remember it. Back at home, I looked through my papers and was astonished to see that already back in 1976, I had made a call for people to claim Bible promise in prayer for receiving the Holy Spirit daily. Mm -hmm. Then I asked myself, Helmut, and what did you do the last 35 years? Mm -hmm. I could not reconstruct it totally, but I have the impression that I had practiced it eight to ten years. And then I prayed only generally. But three years before this brother encountered me, I had started again to pray with Bible promises. And through this two times, I discovered when I pray generally, Lord, please give me the Holy Spirit, then I hope that I receive it. But if I pray with the Bible promise, then I know that I have received it. That's a great difference. I was taken aback and ashamed. I asked the Lord for forgiveness. So these three small events, the Lord started me to prepare some sermons about the Holy Spirit. And I handed these sermons copied to the churches and they sent it everywhere. I had to copy and to copy. 1,500 copies. And two leading brothers, they wrote, they have re read my sermons. I should by all means print that. But I thought, that's only a very small booklet. No publishing house will accept that. So I did nothing, nothing at all. But the Lord did not agree with that. <laughs> I received some days later an email from the secretary of the German-Swiss conference in Switzerland. He told me he had my sermon copies, if I would allow them to make a book out of it. Mm. So the Lord made that book. Mm. Then we, they told me when the book was ready, they made all these things to make a book is a great work. When they were ready, they told me they want to print 200 copies. And I wrote them back, only 200 copies. And you made such a great work. Why don't you give a copy to each family of the conference free? Then they counseled about it and they decided to do it. But before it was printed, they contacted all other German-speaking <coughs> uh, conferences and asked them to join them. And Austria and Baden-Württemberg conference followed. Then we had need of 9,200 books. So I thought, oh, I will exert faith. I let print 10,000. But the printer made a mistake. He printed 
13,500. <laughs> what should I do now? Should I accept so many books? I thought those who love God, everything is for the best. Amen. So I accepted it and they were away very quick. We had to print another 10,000, another 10,000, another 10,000. All together we spread in German 48,000 now. Mm -hmm. Yes, God put it on the heart of another man. Mm -hmm. Then, because of the books, I was invited in churches to run seminars about steps to personal revival, what we do on Sabbath in Ipswich. And they asked me, do you allow us to take it on video? Of course I allowed. Then a brother from Switzerland phoned, I would like to have your, your book as an audio book. Would you allow us uh, to make an audio book out of it? We have a radio speaker here. So they made an audio book. A young man wrote, Do you allow me to make an le electronic book through it? Years later, an American pastor wrote, Do you allow me to make cell phone apps in English, Spanish and Portuguese? When I went to a nearby church, for Sabbath, they have also Russian speaking members. After the sermon, they said to me, Do you know that we have your book in Russian? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not know. <laughs> then came email from a pastor's wife in Hungary I have translated your book into Hungarian. <laughs> They are already translated now, 40 languages. Mm -hmm. And another 10 or 12 are in translation. Nobody could do that. Mm -hmm. The Lord is doing it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there were things which happened. For instance, uh, lady, a sister, which was, is a leader of the woman ministries of a conference in India. She was just praying and fasting for a good subject for the next women conference. And in that time, she received the book from Australia. <laughs> She immediately thought, that is what the Lord wants. She prepared it, and the woman conference was excellent. It was the best ever had. And uh, then the woman all wanted to have it in, in writing. So she spoke with the conference president. He let it translate in their language, Mitzo, and they printed 8,000 copies for each family one. And they printed another thousand when she went to Myanmar, which is a closed country for Christians. Mm -hmm. She had thousand books for an area of Myanmar where they speak the same language. Thousand books in the car. When she came to the border, the police officer was quarreling with somebody. She <laughs> 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 the thousand books were in the like Myanmar. <laughs> or a young man who was a Muslim, who was about three years an Adventist. He received the book from Brazil. And uh, then he wrote to me, if I allow him to translate, 
so it was translated, both books were translated in Urdu, mm -hmm. the language of Pakistan. Pakistan. Then was an uh, And Pentecostal pastor, he handed a copy of it. And some night, this Pentecostal pastor knocked and asked for books. And he wanted a book for each uh, member of his, his congregation. Mm -hmm. And he told him, I'm now 40 years old. I'm a teacher and a pastor and I've read hundreds of books in my life, but there were only two books which impressed me and helped me, and this is one of it. Mm. One of the most outstanding things is what the Lord did in Rwanda. Do you know the General Conference program uh, total member involvement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, everyone is helping for the work. Mm -hmm. So this program was done in 2015 mm -hmm. in uh, Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And uh, when this uh, came to an end, within a short time, the baptized in Rwanda, 110,000 people. Mm -hmm. Such a thing never happened before. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I thought it would be good to give them a copy of the book mm -hmm. because these quick baptisms, mm -hmm. I do not know if these people stay in the church. Mm -hmm. So I wrote to the General Conference if they would support it when we bring this book to Rwanda. They wrote all our budget for Rwanda is out. Uh, we support it, offer it, and if you can help. The Lord did a great thing. I knew more than several months for Rwanda to print 130,000 and for other countries who are poor, who have no money. Mm -hmm. I knew through months that we had to pay a great sum. Mm -hmm. And I prayed for money and only small amounts came in. Mm -hmm. Then in November 2016, I think, I knew that we now have need of nearly 100,000 oil. Mm -hmm. And I prayed, Lord, we need now this money. And you know, we prayed and we have not received yet. What should I do? Mm -hmm. Then came to my thought, ask brother so-and-so a man in a foreign country, a brother. So I wrote immediately to this brother. I asked him if the Lord has filled his hands and his heart to help us. Mm -hmm. I did not know. The next morning he answered, did the Lord say to you, I have deposited my money by him? <laughs> <laughs> And I told back, I prayed last night, and the Lord said, I should ask you. <laughs> 20 minutes later, on a Friday, came an email from him. On Monday, you will have 100,000 euro on your account. So it was printed for Rwanda and other places mm -hmm. and I didn't hear anything anymore of Rwanda because the brother who was in charge of it was uh, at another task. Now, at three months ago, the new secretary of the 
Wanda Jungner wrote, they want to thank again for this book, because of this book, 90% of all the newly baptized are in a good stand. Yes. Can we have more? Another thing happened in Burundi. In Burundi, a lot of miracles, I cannot tell them all. But just one thing which is extraordinary, which happened not, not at another place, because probably no other one uh, did that. They brought the book in Burundi also to all former members. And 320 former members came back because of the book to the church and we were rebaptized. The Lord promised to do great and mighty things. Do you know I received 150 written testimonies meanwhile and hundreds of testimonies oral. And now I know exact what people uh, esteem on that book. It opens our eyes to our person personal spiritual condition. Mm -hmm. I'm saved or lost. More is in chapter 2. They understood the necessary health steps which lead to a spiritual life. Daily surrender to Christ and daily receiving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals all the other personal steps to us. More in chapter 3. By praying with promises, they had the assurance that they received the Holy Spirit. A retired brother who was life, his whole lifetime pastor, who was in, in union working. He wrote me after three times reading the book, through praying with Bible promises. He has victories in his life which he had never seen possible. Mm -hmm. And another four weeks later he told, your book inspired me. I was the speaker of a 3,000 people convention and I spoke about the Holy Spirit and I never saw in my whole life such a reaction in people at this time. Yes, praying with Bible promises and their profound joy caused them to be witnesses and booklet distributors. The message is crisscrossing the world. I want to close with a thought from the introduction. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, mm -hmm. which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. It is about two works, which are both accomplished by the Holy Spirit. God's work in me, the new life, and God's work through me, the Nehemiah work. When Christ lives in us through the Holy Spirit, then we can walk in the works that God prepared beforehand. Mm -hmm. The prerequisite is to completely entrust ourselves to him and to daily ask for the Holy Spirit and receive him. Mm -hmm. The fact is, what God has planned, planned in me and through me will also exceed my possibilities and abilities. God always starts with small things. Mm -hmm. He often chooses the weakest. Mm -hmm. Hudson Taylor, the great and famous missionary to China, 
once responded when someone praised the great influence of his mission and said, it seems to me that God looked over the whole earth to find someone who was weak enough to do his work. <laughs> when he finally found me, he said, this one is weak enough, he will do it. <laughs> All of God's giants were weak people who did great things for God because they could count on God being with them. Amen. When we walk in God's work, then this promise applies to us in a special way. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. While walking God's work, we will experience again and again surprising great and mighty things, things which exceed our possibilities. Rivers of living water will flow. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all your lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Amen. Amen.